Well, hello and hello and hello. Welcome to the stream, everybody. We are streaming today on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitch, and over on LinkedIn. Today, it is the launch of Stream Week, because you know what else it is? It's the launch of my brand new five months in the making 30-day UI design training program that's launched today. It's launch week, 25% off all week. And we're going to be running this really cool, fun UI design challenge here on these live streams. So you can join me every day here for free on YouTube. There's a link down below in the description. Uh, or excuse me, you can join me on all these platforms and you can grab the free Figma file where we are going to be walking through five days of UI design together. Just short, quick, fun little UI design challenges that we can complete together here. We got people in the chat right now on this fine Monday morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are coming from. But hey, before we get started, let me show you the file that we're going to be working in today. I'm very, very excited about it because it's stream week, baby. Um, we got uh, we have five different challenges in inside of our Figma file. Some of these are taken directly from my new UI design program. And some of these are just brand new fun ones that we're gonna be working through, like building some sidebar animation, building a camera snap animation. We're gonna do a fun like Disney streaming platform redesign. We're gonna do some cool parallax stuff and then even build a uh, automobile mobile application. Maybe we can turn the lights on and off and uh, kind of relocate things or navigate with our map. So that is what we are going to be doing today. And again, all of this is in celebration of the brand new launch of the 30 day UI design program. Let me tell you a little bit about that really quickly before we dive into building inside of Figma. Are you ready to take your first steps into the exciting world of user interface design? Then stop wasting your time sifting through hours of YouTube videos and countless blog posts trying to figure out the puzzle of UI design. Traditional schools and boot camps can cost a small fortune, leaving your dreams of becoming a UI designer out of reach. But here's the game changer, the 30 day UI designer program. This isn't another course, it's so much more than that. It's an immersive 30 day hands-on journey to teach you every aspect of UI design without breaking the bank. You're gonna learn the fundamentals of user interface design that underpin every stunning interface out there. You're gonna learn the most up-to-date and modern design techniques that professional UI designers are using right now, and you're gonna use Figma to do it, which is the leading design tool in our industry. You'll learn how to design for iOS, Android, responsive websites that'll make you a master of the digital medium. The program features a challenging 30-day curriculum where you will go through each and every day learning the fundamentals of UI design. By the end of the program, not only will you be super confident in UI design, but you will have had your hands on 30 design exercises and built two capstone projects that will go in your new customized portfolio. You'll have a resume and you'll have case studies. This is the most robust and up-to-date training program for those that want to become professional UI designers. So if you're done wasting your time and ready to start your journey to master user interface design, join the 30-day UI design program and let's make your dream become a reality. So that is what has just launched today. It is launch week, 25% off of the program. If you want to get in, it's the 30 day UI design program. I'm really, really excited about it. But today we're just gonna be doing some fun UI design. If you want to follow along, you can grab the Figma file and you can join me there. We're going to hide boom, 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 boom. Some of the different, uh, let's see, hide others. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. Just like that. Okay, cool. So we have our Figma file open. You can grab this free Figma file down below. Also, Susmita says happy Di Diwali right back at you. I know we had some members inside of my design champs community. Uh, wish me a happy Diwali as well. And that how fun and fortunate it was that I was launching my program on uh, the start of that fun and fantastic time of year. So really cool. So if you uh, are interested, feel free, jump on into the file. Here's what I got for you. Day one, this is where we're going to be today. We're going to be designing this really cool camera. Or we're just going to work on the prototype actually today because it's already pretty much designed. So I figured we'd do something real quick and fun just a snippet today. So what we're going to do is we have a camera um, like situation similar to like an iOS or this is definitely not Android. It's very, very iOS, very iOS specific. What we want to do is allow our users to, you know, shift around in between the navigations down here in prototype mode. Then we want to be able to hit the rotate button right here. And when it goes into rotate mode, here we go. We'll be able to rotate the image. This feels very, very native to a device. We want to be able to turn and rotate this kind of rotation picker here 
As we do that, we want to see that number change. And then when we get it to a rotation that we like, either left or right, we want to be able to confirm and then have our new reoriented photo. That's what we're looking to do today. And so that is what we will accomplish. We've got people asking questions in the chat. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, and I'll try to get to those during this live stream. But again, uh, you know, grab that free file down below, jump into the Figma file, duplicate it to your own workspace, follow along with me if you'd like to. All right, let's do some basic prototyping stuff. All right. Uh, I'm going to head over to prototype mode here inside of Figma. And let's see, we're working on a, we might as well just get this right really quickly. We have a uh, 414 by 896 and we are currently prototyping inside of iPhone 14 Max. So let's go down to not an 8 plus. Ah, we'll just keep it like it is for now. That's fine. And then we will actually uh, grab our elements and pretty cool thing to note. We're like, we're just clipping content here. So if we unclip the content, you can actually see the rest of the design be exposed to the outside of our canvas. And that means you can see all of the different elements that have been placed inside. So we just have a circle with a border that is a, uh, a, a um, dashed border for it. And we have our little element there. We have some numbers. So fun, fun, fun. We'll talk about that here in a second. And uh, so we can unclip that content. We can also drill down on our controls here and unclip that content. You can see we have more controls over there on the right hand side. So this is a, a really good reminder to always be using frames inside of Figma. Frames are the way to go. Never draw a rectangle and fill it with an image and put a bunch of stuff in a group. Try to wrap everything in frames because frames actually interact or kind of work the way that containing elements on the web work, right? So if I was gonna hand a website or a design off to my developers, I'd wanna be able to say, hey, this thing here is a container. It's actually containing this information. And we, maybe we want things to overflow or clip or not clip past the confines of this container. So it just is much more realistic the way that we work on the web and we work in development. So frames for all things, that's just a really quick reminder, okay? So, um, we're going to grab our element here and we're going to go to prototype and you can see that in prototype what we want to do is have horizontal scrolling set now if you're just setting this up from scratch you might get something like this where we have our container like way out here because it's holding all of our elements and then if we have that you'll see we get this little error inside of figma and that error is basically saying hey if you want to do this cool fancy horizontal scroll interaction the container that frame needs to be shorter than the content so here's your frame and i need your content to actually roll past it so i have something to scroll in and out of that's basically what is happening so let's go back and fix that and we just fix that by bringing the size of our frame in. Now we have a little container to scroll in, okay? So that's already set up for us. If we just go right here, click our start, and we can shift space. Let's just turn on our inline previewer right there. And now you can see we're able to actually drag, and I am actually using a mouse, so I'm able to scroll this way, but we're gonna kind of mimic a drag interaction it's native it has that nice native bounce to it feels really really good we like it we're happy with it okay so the next thing we need to do is we'll hide this little thing over here now what we need is as soon as we click on any particular element we want to be able to let me just get rid of these so that we there we go all right so we want to be able to click on our element right? Like for instance, our rotate button. And this is, if you're new to prototyping, this is the basics of prototyping. It's choosing which point or which trigger, which element we want to actually trigger this interaction, okay? We're saying, hey, when we click this button right here, I'm going to grab one of these little nodes, I'm going to drag it over, and I'm just going to let it drop on my next screen. Boom. And now we get our, our interaction elements or, or options here, okay? So what we're going to say is on tap, that's exactly what we want on tap. We want to navigate to, there's a bunch of other options. We get into those in the program if you want to dive in. We don't want to do it instantly. We might want to do it uh, in like a smart animate. We're going to be using some smart animate today and that's going to help us do some kind of cool, smooth, fun stuff, okay? So we're going to smart animate and then let's just do the same thing. We'll do a tap trigger over and back, same thing. Why don't we restart our prototype, see how it looks. I'll click on this item and we can click back now i might even want to be able to click on this item as well to turn it off right so let's start our prototype again just like this 
Let's click on rotate and rotate back. Now we get that nice thing. Now, the reason we're able to do, we're able to use smart animate is you'll notice our elements here. Notice our little picker and maybe even the border, the frame of our image that becomes our new crop zone. Notice how those things are fading in, right? Or they're moving in, they're animating in, they're fading in, however you want to describe it. The reason is because those things are present. Now I love this trick inside of Figma. This is so great is I can click on any element and see how I get these little skeleton outlines. This tells me this is where it is on the other artboards. It either is or isn't. And if it is, here's where it is. You can see the different rotations of them. It's already set up for us for success. You can see when I click on my little frame elements, I have those in three of my artboards. I don't have them here. So this is something that's really interesting and I think worthwhile to talk about. A lot of times we do this kind of to get this smart animate effect, what we try to do is make sure that everything is on one screen also needs to be on the other. That's not always the case though. Notice again, we're just getting this really nice smooth and I'm just really quickly, I'm gonna click on my starting element there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a new flow point here and I'm gonna name this thing, I'll just name it start, okay? And that way I can always go back and just press play right here and it kicks my prototype right back on. Now. Back to what we were saying, that's not always the case that I need everything to be on every artboard. So everything transitions, everything animates. Ah, you don't always need that because sometimes things happen so quickly that it just looks natural. Sometimes if it's not on one artboard, but it is on the other, you're going to get a gentle fade in. And that's actually what we're getting here. You can see my little crop marks here is just fading right in. It looks natural. I don't need to have it on artboard one or, or frame number one. I just have it on frame two. And all of a sudden it just opacity dissolves right in and it looks super natural. Same thing with my button, my confirm button that's happening over here. Okay. So that confirm button is doing the same thing. Now I do want my element right here to move in, right? I want it to animate in because that looks really, really smooth. So that is the thing that I'm going to make sure as we noticed is on multiple artboards, okay? And we, again, we know that because we can roll over it and boom, just like that. And there it is on multiple artboards or frames, okay? So just a quick little reminder, you don't always need everything, but here we go, we got the start. Now what I wanna do is I really, I wanna understand this interesting interaction that's taking place here. So what I'm gonna do is go to design just briefly and I'm gonna grab one of these and I'm gonna paste it off here to the side, okay? And what I'm also gonna do is grab my little number. I'm gonna paste this off to the side because these, kind of, these things kind of feel like they're connected, don't they? All right, so what we have here is, again, we have a nice big ellipse that has a little border on it. And that border ha is dashed, it's a certain thickness. Okay, cool, that stuff's pretty easy. We have a little picker thing, it's literally just there to look like the spot where we're interacting. But then we have a number up top that's literally just a frame and you'll notice, I'm gonna unclip that content as well. Boom, we have all of our degrees of rotation and it's just a text layer dropping from negative nine to positive nine. And what's cool about it is because it's clipped, remember it's in a frame, which is always really helpful. We're able to then move this element around and it looks like the numbers are ticking up and down okay so now you can do this in some really complex ways using the new variables and logic inside of figma but if we're just trying to get the idea across here i think this is going to go ahead and do it so the other important thing to note here about this element is this whole thing is one element it's all been grouped together why so that it can rotate around and the whole thing feels natural right okay cool so let's get rid of that really quickly let's go back up and let's do a little prototype work because what do we want to do we want to drag so i'm going to jump over to prototype i'm going to grab that large element and i'm going to drag my noodle right or my wire over to the next one and i don't, I don't want to do on tap i want to do on drag i'm going to head over to that one we can smart animate all that's fine whatever when you do drag gestures smart animate or the timing and easing of it doesn't really matter because it's being triggered by your actual drag, right? How much you're actually dragging. So if I drag and it, and you know, you might think, oh, I have to tell it like drag to the right, tell it, drag to the left. No, it just knows that if you're dragging that direction that it's gonna work, okay? So let's go back here really quickly. Once we're over here to the left, like we wanna be able to drag back, but why don't we actually just come back? We have one drag gesture. This is kind of hard to see because they're all jumbled together, but we have one drag gesture. So I'm going to move this artboard up here just so we have a little space to work. I know it's going to look a little funky, but don't worry. So 
right? So we have one drag gesture attaching itself there so we can rotate clockwise. Now we need the counterclockwise, right? So why don't we just do another one? Take it to our counterclockwise and say on drag. We want to navigate there. Dude, boom. Now we have multiple drag gestures on the same element, but again, Figma's smart enough to recognize which direction we are dragging, okay? Now, what about, uh, yeah, so what about if we need to go back? Like we're gonna need to go back, uh, absolutely. So let's jump back on this thing and say, once we get down to this element, if we drag back to the left, we don't, we, we just wanna take it back to the middle every time, okay? So let's grab that thing. And again, we're just gonna connect it up here to this one, boom, on drag, perfect. And same thing here, boom, on drag, it's all done, okay? Now, once we get to the spot we like, let's say it is this one, right? And we wanna confirm. Let's grab our confirm and drag that up to our final screen on tap, navigate to, smart animate, and let's see if we can get this thing to work, okay? I'm gonna grab my starting point here. I'm gonna move into presentation mode so it isolates everything and shows nothing but it, okay? Now it's framing it in a phone. Uh, I don't need it to be framed in a phone, so I'm just gonna fix that really quick. I'm gonna click on my canvas and I'm going to say none. I don't really care. I don't wanna see it framed in a phone. Boom, now we can just see the prototype as is, okay? So again, now I click, I see I get my hotspots. I'm gonna click here and enter rotate mode. I can go out of it or I can click and hit the back button. All that works good. Let's drag our element here and boop, boop, boop. And we're getting some funkiness. That's okay, we can fix it here. We're actually getting, it's actually pretty fun. Okay, we're getting some funkiness here. Let's go, boom, smart animate. I don't want easing, let's just go linear on that one. That's gonna work better, I think. And let's try to restart our prototype. Come in here and get some, some animation. Well, it's not doing it and we don't have time to dive in and fix it right now, but this is what happens on a live stream, all right? So let's get it over to like one side and boom, 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 boom. We're not seeing that smooth, smart animate. That's a son of a gun. Okay, we're going to have to go back and fix that and figure out what we are doing wrong. Um, and let's see if we can figure it out because that's a real bummer here. So I'm just going to do a few things. And while we're doing that, hey, while I'm fixing it up, if you have any questions, let me know. We did have some questions in the chat there while I'm figuring out my file. Uh, and Mayar says, Jesse, I'm just starting out with UI and UX design. Can I get going and land my job? Uh, can I, and actually without photo editing skills, vector editing skills as well? Um, that's a good question. So do I think you need photo editing, vector editing? You probably need to have some understanding of those things because those things might come up when you say vector editing. Vector editing could be iconography. It could be you know, some like slight illustrations, stuff like that. You don't have to become a vector illustrator, be really great in Adobe Illustrator, but having some understanding of how vector points work, the pen tool, that stuff can be helpful. A little bit of raster photo editing, it could be helpful. All those things can be helpful. But uh, as you're starting out, yes, you can get a job if you are just solely a UI or UX designer. Again, if you're interested in becoming a UI designer, my, my program just launched today. It's 25% off all weeks, a 30-day UI design program. It's not a course. It is a program where you will actually work through 30 days of curriculum. You get to ask questions, get answers, and learn through lots of different design exercises and a bunch of stuff like that, as well as build some capstone projects, okay? So let's uh, let's do this. Ba -ba 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 -da -bum. I'm just gonna come back into my file. And okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, let's just do here and good, okay, cool. Let's detach this instance and see what we got here, okay? Tried putting them together in an instance We'll see if that worked or not. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna hit start up here on my prototype and that one is not working as well. Wah, wah, wah. It's not working great for me today. Let's undo, 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 undo and see what we have done. Okay, cool. Let's come back and we'll have, we're gonna have to figure this out off camera probably because I'm, I am having a tough time this morning with some technical difficulties and a few things, but so far, so good. Let's just get this final interaction to work and see if we can actually make it work. It wasn't for some reason. So on click, navigate to, all that should be good. Let's see if we can do a click interaction over here 
and see if we can troubleshoot this thing. Troubleshooting prototypes is part of a UI designer's job. So let's drag this down really quickly. And we'll say on, let's do a key and game pad. And let's just try uh, going to the right arrow key. And let's see what happens there. We're gonna open this up, open this fella up and go. Now we're getting it, okay? So we're getting some sort of weird drag issue here uh, using like the, the wheel, right? Because the rotation on the wheel is not really jiving well with us. But you can see that when I click right on my wheel, it is going. So here's some ways we could fix that, all right? We could actually take our um, our on drag gestures off there, our triggers off of there. We don't need it. That could be fine. Let's look at this on drag. Let's get rid of it. And let's do another one and go take that away. And let's just go back to games and keypad and see how it works. So if we click right, it moves down here. Let's try another one really quickly. And if we click games and keypad here, boom, let's assign it to be our left key like that. Boom, let's see if that works for us now. Okay, so now we can get into it. Let's see if it works. It works that way. Yep, it works that way. Okay, so we had some sort of issue with our drag gesture and that's okay, we could fix that. That's not a problem, okay? So let's try that drag gesture one more time because we have games and keypad. So let's see if we could drag another one off and see if we can get this one to work this time. On, drag, navigate there, do the whole thing. Fantastic, let's start and we're trying to drag over one direction. So let's see if we can get it to work this time. Nope, the drag just does not want to work and it's that rotation. So I know what we're gonna do to fix this, okay? So we got two gestures there. What we're gonna do is actually kind of a little bit of a prototype hack. It's not a bad thing at all though. We are going to uh, hit R for rectangle and I'm gonna draw a nice big rectangle across my area right there. Go to design, and I'm gonna bring this down to 0% opacity, okay? So it's still on the screen, but what we'll do is we'll use that as the trigger, okay? We don't need to interact with any of this stuff. What we need is some sort of tappable, triggerable, triggerable, that's a hard word to say, area. So I'm, I'm gonna create that thing and just call it trigger in my layers panel. And why don't we just put that on all of our screens here? That way we actually get the control, okay? And we only need it on that screen. I'm gonna head back to prototype and I'm gonna drag over here. I'm gonna say, boom, on drag. We wanna go there, beautiful. Let's do another one going the other way, on drag. All right, now let's press play and see if we get that first initial drag gesture. There it is, see I'm dragging over? Okay, perfect. Now we just need to be able to drag back. So I'm gonna go over to this little fella and we'll just say on drag and we'll come to this fella as well and we'll drag it backwards, always going back to that center point. Let's try it now. Now we have that invisible prototype. We're dragging this way, we're dragging back, we're dragging that way, <laughs> and we're dragging back, okay? So we're getting pretty close, uh, and we could keep playing with it a little bit and finessing it, but once we get to a point that we like it, like over this way, we should be able to press confirm and it confirms our image, all right? So that about wraps up our prototype for today. You know, sometimes you gotta just troubleshoot it. Sometimes you gotta work with it. Sometimes you gotta mess with it. But thanks for joining me today for this really quick stream. Uh, just doing a little bit of work today, a little bit of prototyping work. Uh, we might've had some technical difficulties, but we'll come back tomorrow. So make sure you download that free Figma file. Join me all week long for stream week as we build some really fun and interesting interactions. And again, if you're interested, it is launch week, 25% off the 30 day UI designer course. So make sure you jump into that. It's a fantastic deal, 30 days. I have not only the normal course version that you can sign up for, but there's also a cohort version if you are interested. And so if you are interested in you know, not just doing it yourself, but need maybe a little bit more accountability, you can head over to the website and you can see I have 15 spots available for the cohort version. It's gonna start in January of 2024, but right now you're getting, uh, you are getting 25% off because it is launch week. So let's just refresh the page, 25% off today for the self-paced course. So consider jumping into that. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, let me know. And again, thank you so much for hanging out with me today on this little live stream. Uh, and join me again tomorrow, same place, same time. We'll be doing more Figma prototyping and design work. We'll see you then.